welcome. This is the fifth uh, video in this series. It is still under the biological sciences. The learning competency that you are supposed to master by now is go are still the following. So we have the first one as explaining how the respiratory and circulatory systems work together to transport nutrients, gases, and other molecules to and from the different parts of the body. And the second learning competency, which is new, and is, you know, newly featured in this video is going to be inferring how one's lifestyle can affect the functioning of the respiratory and circulatory systems. You will lead your learner's module, particularly in unit number 1, module 1, pages 16 to 19. Let's start. The three parts of this session are going to be the following. First part is activity number five, pump it. And then activity number six is going to be the second part, uh, the rhythm of my heart. That is the title of the activity. And then the last part is going to be a discussion about heart rate, uh, particularly the beats per minute. Activity number five has the following objectives. So the first objective as we know it is describing how the heart functions. And then the second one, the second objective, is explaining how blood is pumped by the heart. For the procedure, you will need to refer to your learner's module. And uh, yeah, if you want to make, if you want to create uh, the model that is used in this video, you may do so. But technic but I will be providing you with the following. Ayan. So ito na yung gagamitin natin in going through this activity. So I want you to first observe the following setup. So there are uh, these cups, okay? the, the, we have two cups right here, and then meron tayong isang bottle right here. Okay, tapos meron tayong mga ano dyan, mga, what you, what you call this? Okay, it's straw, clear yung isa, tapos yung itong mga to, ito naman, opaque. Okay, so make those observations. Okay, let's begin. Answer the following questions on your notebook or on a clean sheet of paper. Kindly take note of the answer for the following question. The first one, question number 16 is, what does water inside the jar represent? Yung, color of, yung colored water inside the jar. What does it represent? Question number 17, how will you compare the heart pump model to the and the human heart? So, how will you compare the heart pump model and the human heart to each other. Question number 18, how does the heart function as a pump? Again, how does the heart function as a pump? Next, will the heart model be able to function properly if the straw is blocked? Explain your answer. Okay, so that is the last question for the activity number five, pump it. Let us now proceed to the second uh, part of the, acti of the session, which is also an activity. Activity number six, rhythm of my heart. The first objective of this, uh, of this activity is to measure and describe your pulse or heart rate after several different activities. And of course, second one is explain how to use different time intervals to measure your heart rate. For this activity, you will need, yes, you will need a stopwatch and a timer. Also, you may need to be in a proper attire, so pwedeng mag -PE uniform ka or something that you uh, deem is comfortable. And then, uh, you know, have a data log book. So the first table you need to fill in is the resting heart rate. So for this part, you don't need to do anything first. So you have to sit quietly for a few minutes before beginning the activity. Observe as well the following. Uh, itong ano natin, itong uh, table natin, it is, entitled, it is entitled resting heart rate. The first column is, it is the uh, time intervals. I already filled it up for you. We have 60 seconds, 30 seconds. 15 seconds and 10 seconds. Raw count or the multiplicand. So, saan magagaling ito? For 60 seconds, you are, while sitting quietly, you are going to count the number of beats you feel from your pulse. 
And then you're going to multiply that by 1. Basically, it may, it's going to be the same number here. And then just uh, write the product as the beats per minute. So, ganito siya niyan. Say, for instance, you got here, what you got here is, say, for instance, okay, just an example. What you got here is uh, 30. So, 30 beats yung nakuha mo. So, lalagay mo lang dito is 30. Tapos, uh, say for instance, in here you got the same, uh, 30, you got you got around 15. So, multiplied by 2, you get 30. So, 30, 30. And then, you got here, and well, one naman is uh, 7. So, you uh, multiply it by uh, 4, you'll be getting, say, 28. Tama ba? Yeah. And then for here naman, uh, what you got is save for uh, basta any number. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to add all of the products, divide them by uh, 4 to get the average BPM. Step number 2, when you are ready, place your two fingers either on your neck or on the inside of your wrist and locate your pulse. Um, I am pretty much, I'm pretty sure that you know naman kung saan kayo, saan part ng wrist ninyo, if you focus yung attention ninyo. Okay, so, uh, if you wanna, if you wanna get some guide, you may message me or I'll be discussing it to you, uh, during our, uh, synchronous meeting. Step number three, once you find your pulse, start the watch and for 60 seconds, okay, that is the first interval, count the number of beats you feel. That is going to be your pulse. The next one is uh, you may try the experiment again, but this time for 30 seconds. Tapos, you multiply that by 2. You have to compare your pulses and then repeat it by counting uh, for 15 seconds and then multiply your count by 4. And then by counting for 10 seconds and then multiplying your count by 6. Okay, and then lastly, you're going to get your average BPM, which is going to be the, you know, the uh, quotient. When you divide uh, the uh, the uh, sum of the products by four, I think you were what you are hearing right now in the background is a helicopter. <laughs> it may somehow be distractive, but I hope that you're still with me. Okay. Next is exercise heart rate. So what I want you to do is to perform an exercise here. So please do not perform this activity if you have a severe medical condition. Okay, I'm not going to force you to do this part of the activity. Again, I'm not going to force you to do this part of the activity, especially if you have a severe medical condition. So what you need to do first is you have to stretch well before starting this activity. So you have to go to a place where you can exercise vigorously for at least three minutes. So remember, uh, we have at least three minutes, okay? Uh, you have to exercise vigorously. Okay, so exercise na pwede yung gawin can be cardio, okay, such as jogging for 3 minutes, pwede running upstairs, pwede skipping rope, pwede doing push-ups, or by uh, walking briskly. Kapag tapos na yung 3 minutes, okay, uh, you must be or you are more or less breathing uh, quite harder than when you are rested. And so... Step number two is you have to repeat the procedure for measuring your heart rate in BPM. That is, that means to say count the number of beats by 60, 30, and 15 as well as 10 seconds respectively. Tapos multiply nyo yun by the numbers 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, and 6 respectively. Parang kamukha lang nung resting heart rate yung pinalapan nyo kanina, kaso ngayon nakapag-exercise na kayo. And then you have to get your average beats per minute. Now it should look like this. Okay, I hope that you are you know that you are focusing because uh, these are the excuse me. So these are the two uh, tables that we are uh, uh, that we have just accomplished. Okay, they they look really similar. Okay, ang pinagkaiba lang talaga nila is yung mismong um, activities ninyo. For the resting heart rate, you were just seated. For the exercise heart rate, you performed uh, physical activity. Now, you need to answer the following questions again. So, I hope that you have uh, kept your notebook and your uh, clean sheet of paper ready. So, first question, question number 20. What was your calculated resting pulse? So, the question is asking, ano yung nilagay ninyo sa average BPM for resting heart rate? Okay, for question number 21, ano naman yung pulse ninyo after exercising? So, basically, it's asking, ano yung nilagay ninyo sa average BPM for exercise heart rate. 
Question number 22, how would you differentiate your heart rates before and after exercising? Okay, meron bang pinagkaiba? If meron silang pinagkaiba, which we are expecting meron, in what way are they different from each other? Question number 23, what is the advantage of timing for a full minute to find your pulse? So, kung yung ginagamit ninyo na pagka-time is 60 seconds instead of dividing it by 30, eh, by 2 to get 30, 15, or 10, okay, so ano yung advantage nun? Okay, again, the question is just asking, ano yung advantage ng isang buong minute yung pagbibilang over uh, yung Maybe pagbibilang mo is with only half a minute, quarter a minute, or sixth of a minute. What is the disadvantage naman? What is the advantage naman of timing over a shorter period of time, especially when you have just finished exercising? Again, ano naman yung advantage kapag ang time mo is only for a shorter period of time, say for instance, around 10 seconds lang. So, especially kapag kakatapos mo lang mag-exercise. Will that make your data exact? Will that make your data quite accurate? Precise? What is the advantage? Question number 25, according to statistics, the maximum heart rate should be 220 minus a person's age. So, for in my case, since I am already 25 years old, kailangan pala, according to this one, is uh, 220 minus 25 is 195. Dapat ganun yung, yung, ano ko, yung heart rate ko. Now, how would you interpret your highest heart rate in relation to that given number? So, ano yung, uh, ano yung relationship ng inyong calculated heart rate uh, in relation to uh, the uh, 20, 220 minus your counted heart rate? Uh, minus, minus your age. So, yeah, I, I guess I, I have this feeling that I need to explain this again. So, uh, question number, number 25 is just asking, halimbawa for me, 195 should be my uh, maximum heart rate, 195. In your case, if you are just 15 years old, kailangan daw ang, ang maximum heart rate mo is uh, 220 minus 15. So, 205? Tama ba? So, is that the same as the maximum heart rate na na-record ninyo? Is it the same? Okay, so that is the end for the second uh, part. Yeah, I'm right, right? Yeah, activity number six, rhythm of my heart. Let us now proceed with the discussion. Okay, heart rate or beats per minute. Heart beats per minute. Your heart rate of or pulse refers to the number of times na nagbeat ang heart mo in in a minute. I am so sorry, mali yung grammar natin dito, okay? And I have already a very good discussion flow, so I'm not going to, ano. Pero I hope that you take note of this. Okay, so our correction for this sentence is your heart rate or pulse, so off becomes or or pulse, refers to the number of times your heart beats in a minute singular so that is that means to say beats per minute or bpm so if you have shorter time intervals uh that means uh it's 40 but i know you used only 45 you only you only used uh, 30 but then 15 or 10 or 5 actually kasi pwede namang i-multiply mga yun to get uh, 60. Okay, so uh, basta kailangan, since we're talking about minute here, kailangan umabot siya ng 60 seconds, okay? So whatever factor, uh, whatever, you, whatever, how, okay, no matter how many seconds you use, okay, basta dapat pwede yung multiply to be 60. Okay, when you are resting, your heart rate slows down as your body does not need as much oxygen as it does when you exercise. Your heart rate becomes slower kasi hindi naman ganun kailangan ng body mo ng oxygen. And remember, the heart operates, uh, I mean, the heart operates that way to provide your body with the needed oxygen and other uh, minerals with and other uh, useful molecules. Another risk factor, anyway, that drastically increases your heart rate and decreases the amount of oxygen in the body is smoking cigarettes which is going to be the theme of our next session 
Okay, so for this session, session number five, uh, we are done with those activities, with those uh, parts of the activity, uh, with those uh, parts of your, of your of the session. I keep on saying activities, and I hope that you have already you have focused on this video lesson because this will be assisting you in uh, the next part of the uh, series, which is session number six. The Knowledge Catalog is a brand being developed by your teacher, I yours truly, I am Sir CJ. Um, I am a high school science teacher in the Philippines and I love developing content that I find useful and needed to better my instruction. If you want to support this channel, you may subscribe to it, you may leave a like to this video, and you may uh, provide some constructive criticism or some comments in our comment section. See you in the next video.